to be the marketing partner for Hisense and uh, we've been very proud to organise this event for you tonight so I do hope you enjoy yourselves. Um, we're uh, very glad to have you here at the Old Clare Hotel and uh, I want to have a special thanks for those of you who came from Melbourne. I know Adam Bennett is here, well done, and uh, uh, also Bennett Ring, where are you? You also made, a, made, the, made the trek up, well done. Thank you for joining us uh, today. Um, our uh, Many of you will know Andre and Kevin from Hisense. Unfortunately, they didn't have your good fortune with, uh, with the airlines, and we're expecting them to arrive a bit later on this evening. So uh, we trust they arrive safely. Uh, now, uh, a couple of quick notes, actually. I don't know if you know, but this is actually used to be the Carlton United Breweries building. It's been restored to this fantastic uh, event that it is. This, I believe, used to be a boardroom, so I just... I wonder what sort of conversations and shouting matches went on in here. But um, if you need the bathrooms, they're out the back. So I honestly, I don't normally recommend bathrooms, but you really got to see this one. <laughs> Quite amazing. Um, so that's about, I think, the only um, you know notes that I need to make in terms of housekeeping. I accept to say that we also have a, a special um, uh, guest entertainer uh, that will come on in just a moment. And I do encourage you to stick around because we will have a, uh, a lucky door prize, which will be uh, a very interesting one for you to behold. Now the ad that some of you I hope just uh, were able to see there, and maybe you've seen it on the internet uh, and on TV, was the See the Incredible campaign. This was actually the first TV campaign that Hisense has done for a little while now, and it coincide, coincides with the global sponsorship of the 2018 FIFA World Cup. Many of you would know that Hisense is uh, a big supporter of the, the FIFA World Cup and many other sporting events. Uh, I think you could describe the ad as playful yet premium. And uh, Hisense's positioning is very much around that idea. They like exaggerated humour, uh, and it sets the brand apart. And it, it adds to, um, I think it aligns with the ULED proposition uh, being more familiar and approachable. So, uh, and you would, many of you, I, I think, have recalled um, uh, and worked with the uh, Series 7 TVs, which actually we've got at the back here. Um, many of you have, been, have worked with that, uh, with that TV, which has have had, a, had a fantastic um, response. We've been really encouraged by that. And that's been out in the market since May this year. But let's talk about the Series 8 and Series 9 that we're here to celebrate this evening. So to, uh, to my right, to your left, you can see here the Series 8 TV. Um, there are many fantastic features about this, which I'll let you discover. But uh, I was particularly interested in this cable feature. I think, you know, the tidying up the jungle at the back uh, is quite an interesting, um, quite an interesting feature. Uh, this is the 65-inch display. And then to my left, to your right, is the 75-inch Series 9 model, and uh, it's, uh, it's an incredible uh, television. It, uh, it comes with uh, quantum dot technology, and is the, the first Hisense TV to be awarded a UHD premium certification by the International UHD Alliance. Uh, and that's important because uh, they really do focus on both quality and the creative side of things, which, as you would appreciate, uh, is an important combination. So Hisense is very uh, proud to be able to meet those standards and to, be, to receive that award. Uh, there is, uh, I guess, uh, another thing to say that from a, uh, a technology perspective, um, the Series 9 is the brightest TV available on the Australian market. We've got a whopping 2,200 nits, according to Hisense. So it's, uh, it's an incredible performance. And as you can see, both TVs, from an aesthetic point of view, will look fantastic in your living rooms. Um, I certainly want one. We have uh, some TVs in our office as well, and they're just fantastic performers. Now, before I wrap up, a couple of quick notes on social for those of you on social. Uh, we've set up our own uh, See the Incredible Geo filter on Snapchat. Uh, and if, if uh, Instagram is more your thing, then just include hashtag See the Incredible and hashtag AU. And uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing some of your posts on there. Now, I'd like to introduce our very special guest. 
Um, his name is Matt Tarrant, and he will quite literally carry the See the Incredible theme through this evening. And a couple of quick things about him. He's one of Australia's most popular and highly awarded magicians and mentalists. I don't know how you become a mentalist. I thought it was a TV show. Um, but clearly he's got something that we need to learn. And I'm really looking forward to it. He's also a contestant on Australian Survivor. And he's had sold out shows across the globe. And he's been awarded the Adelaide Fringe People's Choice Award for four years running. So would you please welcome to the stage Matt Tarrant. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate you guys having me here tonight. I just want someone to give me a hand to get that table up on the stage as well, if I can. Anyone would be good. Thank you so much. Guys, my name is Matt Tarrant. I'm a magician and a mentalist. And for those of you who may be thinking right now, uh, I look not like most other magicians, I like to think. Uh, so tonight there is no like sequin dressed girls, uh, there is no rabbits out of hats, none of that kind of stuff. In fact, I call myself a mentalist. Now, for those of you who don't know what a mentalist does, basically a mentalist is someone who uses the power of the mind. Things like body language reading, mind reading, all this kind of stuff to know what you are thinking. But rather than maybe me telling you what that is, I'm going to show you what a mentalist does. So I'm going to need someone to help me out for this first trick. Everyone seems really keen about that as a girl. Oh, good, yeah, we've got, we've got one. Usually for this one, I like to get a female, if that's possible. Someone over the age of... I'll come back to you after, I promise, I promise. But you know what, I might actually ask you to join me up on stage. Yeah, and a massive round of applause for our guys. How you doing? Yeah, I'll, I'll find the space for you. How you doing? Your name is? Bell. Nice to meet you, Bell. Bell, my name is Matt. Bell. Ever been to a magic show before, Bill? No, I haven't. No? no. Cool. This is your first time on stage at a magic show as well, then. Thank yeah. you so much for joining me. Um, so, ever seen a magic show before? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, look, I tell you what, this is probably the best trick to be involved in up on stage at your very first magic show. Yeah. Have you ever played a game called Russian Roulette? No. I haven't played it, but I know about it. You know what it is? Yeah, I know. Okay, cool. Yeah, for those yeah. of you who don't know what Russian Roulette is, basically it's a game they used to play in the Wild West, but they would have a gun. That gun would have five or six chambers inside of that gun, one bullet. They'd spin those chambers around, and when it got to you at the table, hopefully, yeah. that didn't happen. No but don't worry, I couldn't get a gun in here tonight. <laughs> um, but there is a game magicians have played for hundreds of years, somewhat similar to Russian roulette. Before we get into that, I want to show you a video of magicians who have practiced with this trick in the past. Can we get that video, if we can, please? It's going to be on that TV right there in just a second. This is the pause for bringing up a bit of drama. Something that will make you do that is the infamous spike trick. The great stays a little bit. Something is. And then, see the point right there. Smuggle up their hands. This modern magic trick increases the chance of injury and pain. An exponent of the spike trick is street magician Chris Korn, who places a metal spike under polystyrene cuts and tries to avoid slamming his palm onto the spike even after they're moved around. Chris didn't understand how dangerous it was. While rehearsing, I mix up the cups and I see where the spike is. All right, look, just, just you know there's no magnets, anything in my hand. I see him notice where the spike is because of how the trick works. Then he raises his hand real high and slams it down on exactly the cup with the spike underneath it. It is terrible to watch. I took no pleasure in that. I mean, I watched it seven times. But I took no pleasure in it. So, welcome to my magic show. <laughs> and here's the thing I don't have a gun, but I do have a large metal spike. Can you be famous? Hold your hand up for me. Just like that. And feel yeah. that that spike is yeah. real. Yep. Right, good. Now I'm going to place that spike inside this block of wood. What I'm going to do is place that spike and that block of wood inside this last bag. But while I do this, I don't want you to see what I'm doing. Okay, so you're going to turn and face that way, just like that. I'm going to put my sleeve. I'm going to put my sleeve up, just like that, so everyone knows what I'm doing. I'm going to place that spike and that block of wood inside this last bag. And then what I'm going to do 
is move those bags around. That way you have no idea which of these bags contains a spike and which of these bags is safe. Right? Yep. Good. Uh, you can look back now. Yep. Uh, now it's safe to say you have no idea right now which bag contains a spike and which one is safe, correct? Correct. Good, but here's the thing. I know which bag contains a spike, as does every single person watching here. That is not very fair. You see, I don't want anyone to know which one contains a spike and which one is safe. So what I'd like you to do, you're going to move these bags around yourself. Oh, yeah. Just like that, nice and gently, you're going to move those bags around until you want 100% happy. They are random and no one knows which bag is which. Just two things. Yeah. No looking inside the bag yep. for the spike, no touching for the spike, none of that crap. Yeah. Um, but while you do that, while you move this around, I don't want anyone else to see uh, what you are doing. So I'm just going to take my suit jacket off and place it in front of those spikes so no one else can see. And when you're ready, you can move those bags around for me. No one else can see. Make sure the people on the sides aren't watching either. Good, even turn around, perfect. You're going to move those bags around until you're 100% happy. They are random and no one knows which bag is which. Let me know when you are done. Good. Now, for everyone else watching me, uh, you will also notice for this trick, uh, most magicians will wear a watch or, or a ring, something like that. And that will tell them uh, which one contains a spike and which is safe. The watch either includes some sort of electronic or, or that ring is magnetic. But not me. Things no. are good. Good. For this trick, I do this as natural as you possibly can. No watch, no ring, no suit jacket. This is as <laughs> natural and as stupid as this trick gets. Great. No, no lawyer? So we have, <laughs> we have four bags here that are completely random, you have no idea which is which, these guys have no idea either. Good. Uh, I also do have a blindfold. Can you make sure that blindfold is real for me and yeah. that I can't see through that blindfold? It's right up to your, not right up to your oh, face, so you can see. Uh, I do also have some Dettol, um, oh, yeah. just in case this goes wrong. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to place that blindfold on myself. Now, yeah. if you think maybe there is some sort of way that I've seen like a marking or something <laughs> on one of the bags, uh, and that tells me it contains a spike. What I'd like you to do is just quickly move those bags around once more for me, that way everyone knows there is no way for me to have seen any marking or anything like that. And when you are happy with those bags are completely random, what I'd like you to do is grab my hand, my right hand, and place it over one of the bags that you okay. think does not contain the spike. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, my hand's above a bag? Yep. And you are certain that this bag does not contain the spike? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm certain. <laughs> I need you to be 100% confident. Yes okay. or no, does this bag contain the spike? It does not. Good guess. Yeah. Good guess. <laughs> But here's the thing, it was only one in four, your chances were pretty good. You see, now it's a little bit tougher. It's no longer one in four, no, now it's one in three. I want to take my hand again and place it over another one of the bags that you think does not contain the spike. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confident. No. <laughs> yeah, right there. So You're certain. I'm certain. You seem a lot more confident in the summer, it's I'm good. Yes or no, does this bag contain the spike? It does not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but here's the thing, this is now the toughest part of this trick. Now it's 50-50, one in two. You see, one of these bags contains a spike, the other bag is safe. 50-50, yep. <laughs> this is all on you. I want you to take my hand and place it over the last bag that you think does not contain the spike. No pressure. All right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this one seems Ooh. correct. Oh. <laughs> right there. <laughs> you don't want to change your mind? Um. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last time, does this bag contain the spike? Uh, I think it does, so I'm going to change your hand. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you are certain that this bag does not contain the spike? It does not. I'm 100% certain. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm not so confident. 
In fact, what I want to do, just before I do okay. do this, uh, I just want to take my blindfold off. Okay, so, was, oh, so this bag here, you think, doesn't yeah. contain the spine. I'm good. Excited. You know what? Can you just place your hand up for me? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> So this bag doesn't contain the spiky thing. <laughs> We're about to find out. Really? But um, you know what? Before I do this, mm. I just have one last video that I want to show okay. you. Okay. Can we play that now if we can? Neither me nor the uh, audience knows where the knife is. And then I make my psychic selection, and if all goes well... Unfortunately tonight, fortunately for you and for everyone else in this room, you thought that last bag contains a spike, and well, uh, it does. A massive round of applause. And that is probably one of my favourite moments in Magic, when someone is up on stage begging me not to, almost in tears. That is one of the biggest experiences that I think you can feel up on a stage. Exactly. Guys, thank you so much. My name's been Matt Turner. I'll be back in a little bit to show you one more. Enjoy your night until then. Thank you guys so much.